Today, I'm going to show you how to create a five layer stencil of this skull. I'm going to go through the whole process from creating the stencils in Photoshop, cutting them out and painting them. I'm also going to show you a whole bunch of my little tricks all along the way to make the whole process easier for you. So let's get started in Photoshop by creating the stencils. So I've got this image of these three skulls, which I got from Adobe Image Stock. I'll have a link to this image in the description below. So if you guys want a copy, you can grab one and follow along if you wish to. So the first thing I'm going to do is crop this image because I only want to create a stencil of the center skull. I don't really need the ones on the sides. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the rectangular selection tool. I'm just going to select a rectangle around the image and then I'm going to go control C, file, new. And then I'll create a little clipboard here, which I'm just going to click create. So it creates it automatically for me. And I'm going to go control V to paste my image onto this new canvas. Now, the next thing I want to do is remove the background. Now there's two ways to do it. The best way of doing it is by selecting the pen tool and manually creating an edge around the outside of your image. And this is the way I tend to recommend it for most images, but because this image has such a clear crisp edge, we can sort of take a little bit of a shortcut and use the magic wand tool to select the background and delete it. And this only works because the image was just plain black. It was sort of one color. It didn't have anything in the background. So it made it much easier for us. So once we've done that, go over to my plugins here and go down to the Wicked Stencils plugin. And you can find this on the Adobe Cloud Store if you don't have a copy. This makes the whole process so much easier. Because all you really need to do is click on the Wicked Stencils, which will bring up this tab here and click Show Stencils. And right here, it's created some amazing stencils for us. And what it's done is it's actually created a five layer with some preset colors that I was mucking around with before. But let's start from the beginning. And what I'm gonna do is go back to the plugins, Wicked Plugins and reset the options. And now if I click Show Stencils again, what it defaults to is 12 layers and all these different gray tones here. But for today's video, like I said, I wanna create a five layer stencil. So I'm gonna drag this back down to five and then I'm going to adjust the colors. So the base one will be black and I'm just gonna go for a basic monotone palette here, just of my gray tones. So I'm just gonna set up my basic palette, evenly spacing out all the gray tones. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my layers ever so slightly. Cause what you can see is we've got way too much black in this image and it's really overpowering it. So if we drag our base bottom layers back across a little bit, you'll see that we can reduce the amount of black we get in this image. And what I wanna do is find a point where I get just enough black to get enough detail around the teeth and the nose and the eye, but not too much. But now what you can see is we've got too much of this other darker gray. So if we adjust all of these sliders and try to balance them out a little bit, you'll start to see our image taking place. But what I find is lacking now is we've got all our gray tones set up, but we don't have enough detail image. It's kind of losing a fair bit. So what we can do is adjust the edge detail. Right now it's set to a default of three, which is fairly low, but it makes it really easy to cut the stencils if you choose this setting. So I'm gonna reduce this down to about 1.5 I'd say would be enough and what you can see already is by reducing it by half we got double the amount of detail you can see that it's really picked up some of these textures around the bone and the eye sockets and even some of the hairline fractures and those are some of the details I really want to capture in this stencil today so here we go this stencil is looking amazing so now that I'm happy with all my settings all I need to do is hit OK and as you can see, it creates all of my layers for me with the corner markers on each layer as well. So if I go through each one here, you can see my white, my light gray, my mid gray, my dark gray, and my black. Now this image does not have a lot of black in it. So what I like to do is I like to go through each of my stencil layers and whichever one has the most amount of color in it. So in this one, the darkest gray has the largest surface area. So what I'm gonna do is take my black, which is usually at the bottom, and take that all the way up to the top above the white. And the reason why I do that is if you were to add bridges to this layer, it's really tricky, you'd be adding bridges everywhere, and it just make it quite difficult to paint. So what I like to do is fill this one in completely. 
And the way you can do that is just by selecting the magic wand tool in the outside of the stencil. Hit Control Shift I to inverse the selection. Then hit I for the ink dropper tool, which is up here. If you're looking to find the tool, then switch out to the brush tool, not the pencil. I want the brush. Get a really big brush and just fill that in completely. So that way, when you go to cut your first stencil, it'll be really easy because all you have to do is cut an outline. And when you go to paint it, it'll be even easier because this will be your first layer. It'll be the base and just makes it so much easier. So then you can go up to your second color, which will be your mid gray. And right here, you can see there are definitely a few areas where we'll need a bridge. So to keep this area at the dark gray, we'll need to keep a portion of the stencil in here. And in order to do that, we need to add a bridge. The way I like to add bridges is just by switching on the layer above it. And if you're lucky, you'll find a few spots where you can hide a bridge. So I can see one already right here. So if I select my eraser tool and then select the correct layer, which is this one here, I want to erase some of the painted area just through here. And if you hit it, if you select shift, shift, click, and then holding down shift, click again, you get a nice straight line all the way through there. So now when I switch on the layer above, it, you wouldn't even know there was a bridge hidden under that on the layer below. So that's the best way you can add bridges. If you'd like to see me add the rest of the bridges to the stencil, then please check out the rest of the video in the members only section. And I think that will look amazing as a stencil. For a five layer, that's captured a lot of detail and that's gonna look really good. So I can't wait to cut this out and paint it up. So now that I've prepared all of my stencil layers, all we need to do is export them. So what I like to do is switch off all the layers except the one that I wanna export and just go file, export, quick export as PNG and just create a folder somewhere. So drag the, yeah, sure, why not? I'll save it. New folder, skull, stem, soul. And then name this layer one. Very stark or great. And then just going through all of your layers one by one, saving them out. Layer two, dark gray. Right. This will be my third layer. And I think that would be um, mid gray. Then we have our white layer. Click export. And that's layer four, save. And then saving out our black as well. They have top. And this is also the order in which I would paint them. I usually tend to follow this process most of the time, unless there's a lot of black in my image, then I'd actually consider using black as my base. Anyway, most of our layers are saved out now. So now we can go over to Cricut. Right, so now we are in our Cricut software. I usually just select new project, upload, Upload image, browse. Oh, where did I save that? It goes drive D, scuff stencil. And unfortunately I have to go one by one, which is a bit annoying. Click continue, select single layer. And um, that's our first layer. Now you can see that the reason why I always make sure my markers are on the outside of my stencil is so I can use them to actually set the dimensions of my image. Now when I go through all of my layers, I can actually set them all to the correct dimensions and because they're all on the outside, they're the outermost points and when I go to cut them out, they'll all be exactly the same dimension, which is really important to get your stencils to line up properly. So now once we're on our canvas, what we want to do is go over to settings, make sure that our canvas is in the right unit dimension. I'm going to be working in metric because I'm in that part of the world. Select your image and then select the dimensions. So I want 41.5 centimeters in height because that's the size of an A3 paper. And I want to use as much of it as possible, making this image and painting as large as I possibly can. So there we got 41 by 24.56 and that is perfect. So now what I can do is load up my paper and my mat on my Cricut machine and cut out our stencils. All right, we're connected. So for my material, what I like to use is some medium color stock. It's fairly thick. 
holds its shape pretty well, even if you have really intricate bridges. As long as they cut out, it generally holds together really well. And the best part is, you can always recycle your waste as well. Um, so I select that. And then what I also like to use is that green mats. I find they work the best because sometimes if your stencils are really intricate, it can be a bit tricky to peel them off without ripping them. But I find these just have the right amount of tack that if you're really careful about how you do it, it's not too bad peeling them off and they generally don't rip. Um, in terms of my blades, I just buy them in bulk off Amazon. I'll have a link in the description below. They're super cheap and the reason why I buy the cheaper Chinese knockoffs is so I can actually replace the blades more often like after each project as opposed to buying the really expensive ones from Cricut and replacing them like once in a blue moon and they're going blunt all the time. So let's cut out all our stencils and then we can get painting. So now we're ready to do some painting and the first thing I like to do when I get my stencils out is to get some spray adhesive and apply a bit of spray adhesive to the back of these stencils so they stick down really well, you get really sharp edges and you don't need to use weights. So let's apply a bit of spray adhesive to the back of these quickly. Today I'm just going to be painting on some canvas panels that are about 12 by 16 inches. So first thing I'm going to do is put down a background with a bit of black and a soft grey cap. Now for my colors, I'm going to keep it simple today. I'm just going to use black, anthrodite gray, wolf gray, pearl gray, and Siberian gray. And that will be our five layers. I'm not using white because I think white might be a bit too strong. This Siberian gray is super light, so I think they'll be perfect for our light color. So now that our spray adhesive is nice and tacky on the back, we can just take our stencil and stick it down. And it should hold down perfectly. Now with these crosses, you usually want to put a bit of tape or something under them. I didn't because it's on a black background and I can cover it up super easily. Now one little tip I can give you is to go really light, as light as you can. And that's why I use these soft blue caps. So that when you put down your paints, you kind of want a bit of extra texture and especially because this is a skull, you can see I went really light on some areas just to try and make it look super grainy and almost like a bit like that bone texture that we're looking for. So that's our first layer done already and we can start peeling off our stencil. So now we're ready for our second layer, we just line that up.
and there we go. One awesome looking skull. That came out really good for a five layer stencil. And as you can see, the whole process was pretty simple and easy. Now, of course, we kept it simple for this one, but but once you get to this stage, of course, you can take it a step further, start experimenting with different backgrounds, experimenting with different colors like reds, blues, greens, and anything else. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.